contrary to popular belief, I am not a Scala fanboy, but what the Scala contributors have achieved with Scala 3 is borderline miraculous. Holy Jesus on a stick. Let me show you. Hey, Vlad here from devinsidey.com, welcome to another video. I've been doing Scala since 2010 and if you're new here you should know that this is mostly a Scala channel. That said, I don't consider myself a Scala fanboy. As a senior engineer, I'm well aware that nothing is perfect. And yet, here I am making another video with my mind blown by the wonders of Scala. Before I tell you all about it, please help me fix this. We are on the road to 10k subs and it would be awesome if we could get there before Christmas. Also, please hit the like button, it's a nice and easy way to show your support. This video is brought to you by the lovely people like yourself who support me on Patreon. Your contributions allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then again choose to spend with you, whether it's doing live streams or answering your questions on Discord. Big shout out to Fred Alview and Joe Han, who are my highest tier patrons. Thank you. Let's back up real quick. I've recently inherited a play code base and I haven't touched play in over 10 years at this point. In case you're not familiar, play is a Rails-like MVC web framework for server-side templating and as such it's especially well suited for rapid prototyping. It's not purely functional, but it's been around for quite some time, so it's battle proven. Now, relatively recently, I recorded a series about the so-called diamond architecture, which is based on clean architecture by Uncle Bob. And so I wanted to see how dependency injection is done in play. I wanted to see how play would fit into this whole picture. I live streamed the whole thing and the TLDR is that it worked. To sum up the diamond architecture, we use the multi-project builds for our monolith or you know each individual microservice. And then at the top we have the RAD core, which contains the business logic of our application. Then on the left we have the team blue for the delivery portion of our application. This is usually an HTTP server or you know a gRPC server. Essentially whatever message comes in uh, from for example a message broker or it could be a scheduled uh, tick event from some scheduler and then whatever happens we just call a method on the core right we always go to the business logic and then on the right we have the team green with all the things that the core requires typically it's at least the config and the database but it could also be message producers or http clients or grpc clients that talk to other microservices for example and then at the bottom we have again team red with the main this is where the dependency injection happens and the entire application is being assembled together and also this is where the main method is now i wanted to confine play to live only in the delivery portion of the application with the exception of main of course because main has a dependency on everything after i succeeded i started to wonder whether the core of the application including all of the things that the core requires can be made functional by using an effect library like cat's effect or zeal even though play forces us to use futures we can always convert an effect type like zeal into a future in our http controllers and it worked after i did that i was like wait a minute the play framework is not published for scala 3 yet but since the core and everything that the core requires is detached from play maybe i can make it compile with scala 3 and i did it worked this is so far away from the python 2 slash 3 fiasco seriously how dare some of you compare them i take my metaphorical hat off to all the scala contributors especially the tooling team for this tremendous achievement. I have a clean code base with a mix of Scala 2 and 3 and Metals eats it for breakfast. Now I'll spend the rest of the video showing you the code base. It's really tiny, it's just a hello world. But before we get to it, I would like to mention a couple of things. Number one, mixing Scala 2 and Scala 3 in the same code base was made possible for the purposes of transitioning an existing Scala 2 code base to Scala 3 gradually. This is also why they share the same standard library. It's not a similar standard library, it's literally the same jar. Anyways, the point that I'm trying to make is that what I'm going to show you is an experiment. So if I were you, I would not start a new code base by mixing Scala 2 and 3 unless you know exactly what you're doing. Just pick one of them, but don't mix, because if you do mix, you will be forced to work with the common denominator of the features of both. And that's not what you want to do. Recently, there has been some concern that Scala 3 is not yet ready for prime time. And unfortunately, the answer is, it depends. I know it's unsatisfactory. I start my projects with Scala 3, unless I have a reason, you know, something is missing, then I fall back to Scala 2, but I default to Scala 3. Of course, you do you. And number two, what I'm showing you here is just a prototype. Now, it totally works and I even made the test work, but please don't copy paste it blindly into production applications. Now, this is the project that I created and obviously it's going to be on GitHub. The link is going to be down in the description. I'm recording this video at the end of 2022 and as of right now, 
Play 2.8.18 is out and it only works with Java 11 and 8, even though Java 17 has already been around for like a year. So it recommends to use the latest version of SBT, but recently SBT 1.8.0 came out and it switched to XML2, so it actually doesn't work. So we need to go down to 1.72. All right. Now I started this project with the place color C template or whatever it's called. And uh, once I got it to work, I threw it out and I started with my own uh, Scala C template and uh, I just modified it. Like if you're not familiar, play is just an SBT plugin. And as you can see, it's right here, 2818. Okay. So I just edited it over here and in my build, which is a multi-build, I just made sure that only the delivery enables it and only the main, right? Because the main has dependency on everything. So uh, obviously it will have dependency on, um, on play. In fact, um, there will be a couple of things that um, are actually required to be in here, even though I would have preferred them to be here, okay? So this is a multi-build, uh, but it doesn't look like a diamond because I didn't need to have something like the database or a config. It was enough for me to have just the core. So we have main, main dep it depends on delivery, delivery depends on the core. I have a dependency graph over here, but it's very boring. And there you go, main depends on delivery, delivery depends on the core. Before we get into the code, let me actually run it real quick. So I'm gonna run SBT wait for it to load real quick all right i loaded as you can see there are three projects inside and the root project that combines all of them and uh, so i can do just main slash run but i also want to uh, switch into main so that we see this uh printout right so this comes from the play plugin as you can see it's 2818 and we're using java 11. by the way uh some next videos are coming soon so you might want to hit the subscribe button all right uh let me actually get back to root because i prefer to do like main run Okay, and if you're not familiar with Play, it just kind of like gets stuck uh, over here and it waits for requests and it even, uh, you know, reloads if you, uh, you know, if you change something, it recompiles the files and stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to curl into it. So I'm going to go like this. It's just a Hello World app and it just uh, displays the current time, as you can see over here. So if I run it a couple more times, it's going to change. Uh, also, let's open it in the browser, localhost 9000, which is the default port. And as you can see, this is just the current time. Uh, also, I made sure that uh, all the all the assets are loaded, right? So that nothing is lost, right? So we have the main CSS, main JS. Even though there's nothing in there, uh, I wanted to make sure that you know that they're fine, you know, found properly because this is a multi-build now. Let's go back to the code actually, and um, yeah, I also have the tests. So um, I was only interested in the play test. So I have the controller suite over here. Uh, I'm using Scala test, so I just go test like this. And it's a bit flaky because, you know, we're getting the current time. So I'm trying to, to see that, you know, the HTML that is being returned, like all of the stuff that it contains, you know, at least like hours and minutes, right? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm setting the seconds to zero and then a seconds to uh, zero as well. Okay, so this is some uh, play stuff over here. So there's an actual request happening. Um, I mean, as far as I understand, there's no actual like, server running. It just like checks the... Uh, checks, the, checks the routes, right? As I already mentioned, like last time I used Play was like 10 years ago, so I don't even remember how it works. And even though it's flaky, most of the times it actually works just fine. So I have an alias for bloop like this. And if I go like this, as you can see, I was uh, preparing, right? So if I just run this test three times, it's gonna be green all the three times. Yeah, so it's it's only very rarely flaky, but you know, but it is flaky. As I already mentioned, uh, we're using SBT172. We're using Play2818. And if we were to go to build, so we go like this with this build slash color version uh, 3.2.1. And if you have seen my SBT tutorial, which is technically not a tutorial, then you know that this whole this build slash uh, has a very low priority, right? So this is just a fallback. So basically I'm saying that uh, all the projects are going to be 3.2.1 unless they specify something else. And as you can see over here, like the core uses the Scala 3 settings, uh, but the delivery and main, they use the Scala 2 settings. And if you were to jump to Scala 2 settings, just the value over here that says, you know, Scala version is going to be 2, 30, and 10. And these are the Scala 2 comp uh, compiler flags. And these over here are the Scala 3 comp compiler flags. One other thing that I would like to point out, as you have learned in the same video about SBT. If we go like that, if we go core source directories, and we're going to see the typical source directories of a Scala application, right? Like source means Scala. There's one for Scala 3, there's one for Java, there's also source manage. Uh, however, for delivery, because we're including, we're enabling the uh, play plugin, if we go like this, uh, we actually need to put our source somewhere else, right? So we, there's the app folder. There's also the config folder, but it's not a, a part of the of this um, 
uh, compilation folder, which is also the reason why, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Play, but in Play, you have the conf folder and you have a DSL to uh, describe your routes. And this thing actually generates Scala code. And so uh, what happens sometimes is like, um, so if I'm gonna clean, right? And I'm going to do uh, compile, right? Which is just like, you know, compile everything. Then we're going to see one file in the core. Then we're going to see around 10 files in the delivery. And we're also going to see three files in the main. Right? However, I'm going to clean after this finishes, right? I'm going to clean. And if I do main run, notice that it's not going to compile the uh, three files in main. Okay. It is only going to compile them once we're actually going to uh, send the request, right? So if I'm going to send this, we're going to see compiling three files. And there you go. Right. This is because this conf file is somewhere else. As far as I understand, it wasn't actually super important to understand, but still, you know, we're talking about the anatomy of play. So I might as well. Uh, explain this. One thing to notice here is that uh, if you put our assets into the public folder, they will be available under, you know, slash assets file. And this folder, uh, you know, this public folder actually needs to lay around in main over here. I would have preferred if it was there, uh, but I actually needed to be here because like this is the application that is being run. And so these files are being copied, you know, to the target directory. Okay, so uh, if you actually open the main, and if you're not familiar with Play, I'm gonna walk through it a little bit more slowly in just a second. But if we go over here, it uses a so-called router. So it goes like routes and then assets and then versioned. But like once it actually runs in the end, uh, if we were to run it again real quick and curl into it again, you're going to see that it actually converts it into slash assets, slash JavaScripts, main JS. And this is exactly uh, what is uh, over here, right? So we have public, JavaScripts, uh, main.js, right? So it rewrites them uh, behind the scenes. Now, one of the most important things that we're gonna talk about is the dependencies. It's a common convention to have uh, a separate file with dependencies. I like to nest them like this. Uh, most people don't, uh, but this is not the point. The point is uh, this uh, funny looking thing over here, right? This cross, cross version for three, uh, use 2.13. So Scala 3 can consume Scala 2 libraries and the other way around. I'm actually going to show you a page over here from the documentation. Uh, the link is going to be down in the description for the, you know, this is a Scala 3 migration guide uh, class pass level. And in fact, what we need is actually going to be down at the bottom over here, right? So this is pretty much what we have, right? So we're going to have the core which is going to use Scala 3. However, we have Play, which uses 2.13, which is going to depend on Core, which uses Scala 3. And Core depends on the Scala 2.13 library. And also it depends on Zeal for 2.13, even though Zeal has already been published for Scala 3, right? So this is exactly what this part is doing. It says, okay, so if you have a Scala 2 project, well, then use the Scala 2.13 version of Zeal. And if you have the Scala 3 project over here, then also use the Scala 2.13 version because we can actually are we're actually not allowed to have both, right? So this is this paragraph over here. Let me zoom in. It basically says you can mix the libraries, you know, you can have like the version three and the version 213 as long as, as it's different libraries, right? But as soon as you have the same library, you cannot have full three and you cannot have full 213, right? So we have to decide. And we basically we're saying like all of these dependencies, they need to go down to Scala 2, even though the version for three is already published, right? So even though it already exists. Now Scala 3 can automatically consume the Scala 2 artifacts, but Scala 2 needs an additional flag, which is this one, the tasty reader. It's in the same doc. If you have a Scala 2 uh, component that depends on Scala 3, it requires this tasty reader. So let's go through the whole thing real quick. All right, because maybe you're not familiar with Play. Okay, so we're gonna start with the main, right? So main is inside of the main, it has to be inside of the app folder. And it's just laying around in there, right? So main.scala. In fact, I'm noticing right now that it's actually in the wrong in the wrong place, right? Because it is the main for the play diamonds, right? So it needs to be over there. It needs to be over there, right? And therefore, uh, it actually needs to be package. Why is it called play diamonds? This folder is wrong. Hold up. I need to rename it. The app is called uh, play scala 3 zeo. So the main is now in there and there's use case and stuff. Okay. So it's all good. Okay. Let's, let's see if I, if I broke stuff, I don't think I did. All right. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Still works. Yep. And let me check if the assets are there. Yep. Yeah, all good. Okay. So, um, 
this is where the main is, right? So it's in app, dev inside you, name of the application, this is the main. Um, it uses this application loader, which is a place thing, right? So uh, by the way, by default, uh, you don't do dependency injection in play, right? So by default, it's like done automatically for you. The controllers are being instantiated for you. They use juice these days. Uh, but you can actually statically wire everything. And this is what I wanted to figure out, okay? So this is copy pasted straight from the doc. There's an application loader. And you have to override a dev, which gets some, some context and you do a new program, you give it a context and you do dot application. So the program, if I jump in there, um, I am not sure why it says that it cannot be found. All right, so uh, I just imported the build and I recited VS Code and now it can jump in there. I don't know, I don't know what, what, what went wrong, okay? Um, actually, I just remember that also, like if you're doing dependency injection manually, you need to go into conf, into application.conf, and you need to say, you know, where this main is, right? So it's in dev inside your place color 3 zeo.main, okay? So now yeah, it will be found, okay? So uh, new program, which is, you know, just over here, like this is literally copy pasted straight from the documentation. And so uh, what is happening over here is that we're creating this routes thing, and this stuff was being generated for us, right? So in the, de in the del delivery in conf, there is this routes file, and uh, after, you know, it's being generated, uh, if you can jump over here, as you can see, uh, if I go down like this, right? So as you can see over here, um, it, it generates this class uh, with a constructor where it wants like three things. It wants like the error handler, it wants the first controller, and it wants, you know, the assets one. And it even says like where, where it generated, them, right? So this is line seven, uh, this is line 10, right? So it generated like um, uh, all of this stuff. Uh, in fact, yeah, so line 7 is the controller and line 10 is the is the assets, okay? So uh, this allows us to um, to manually wire everything together, right? So um, these are these uh, controller components that are uh, coming from uh, building components from context, uh, which extends, you know, building components and stuff. So somehow uh, it ends up over here. Again, literally, this is copy pasted from their documentation about how to aesthetically wire, you know, how to aesthetically do dependency injection. So the only part that I introduced is um, I created this implicit thing so that I don't have to pass it around. And then I go use case one di dot controller. Okay. So we're now over here in the use case one di, which is just an object which creates a controller, needs a implicit controller components, creates a new controller, the controller needs a boundary. Okay. So if we were to go to the controller, we're going to see a class that wants a boundary, it requires this uh, controller components. By the way, I recently found out that you can do implicit and override val in the same, uh, you know, in the second parameter list. I actually didn't know this. Extend some base controller from play. And then um, I did this uh, async zeo helper. I'm going to show it to you in just a second. But essentially, we're just calling boundary dot business logic. It gives us um, a local time and we're, you know, we're returning, okay, view, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, let's actually go into the business logic. Okay, so this is where the fun begins, right? Because this is the Scala 3 project. And by the way, in the Scala FMT, um, I actually configured a couple of things. I did like a file override and said, okay, like in Scala, you know, in the in the 2 delivery and also in the 3 main, you know, the dialect is going to be Scala 2.13. Okay, if we go back over here, uh, we're going to see this, well, I actually should not close, right? So we're in core and boundary, you also see it um, over here, okay? This is just a trait and uh, this is the implementation of, of a trait, right? So over here we have new boundary. This is something that um, Scala 3 can infer for us, okay? Uh, one interesting thing uh, to note here is this uh, using uh, trace thing, okay? So um, let me actually remove this real quick like this like that okay so now it's not going to compile and what happens is that remember zeo is published for scala 3 and also zeo is published for scala 2 and in both of them uh this succeed function over here it actually requires a trace right so as you can see right there's this parameter list right so it, it is required now where does it come from well both in scala 2 and in scala 3 macros generates it at the spot However, over here, we cannot use macros. Why can't we? Well, because we're inside of Scala 3, but we depend on Zeo that was published for Scala 2. And so the macros that is inside of that Zeo library cannot be used inside of Scala 3, right? And so therefore, and this is why I meant, you know, earlier when I said, you know, when you're starting new projects, you know, don't do what I'm doing. Like, this is just an experiment, right? Don't mix Scala 2 and Scala 3 because you're going to run uh, against issues like this. 
right? So I just put a using trace in there, right? And so whatever is calling that, again, which is a controller node, this is now Scala 2. And therefore it has ZO2, you know, well, it has the ZO version that was published for Scala 2. And so it can actually use that macros to actually generate this trace to actually inject it, right? Because remember, like over here, this business logic, I'm asking it to show me the type, but it doesn't. But it wants this trace now, so it, it, it is coming from somewhere, right? Now again, I didn't go beyond the core, right? Something like database or whatever, but all of these could actually use um, Scala 3. Okay, right, so uh, let's look at this thing. This is just a helper that I wrote. I don't know how bulletproof is. From my case, it worked. It basically uh, runs Zio uh, against the future, right? So this is a, a function uh, over here, like I put it into a, uh, a package object inside of delivery. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves of Scala 2 is that I cannot have top-level definitions uh, for multi-builds like this, like these package objects are really limited because you can have only one of them, right? So if I copy-paste it and I put it over there, like the way I structure my applications is that they're all like in the same kind of like namespaces. It's namespace, it's sort of like a cake pattern, but without traits, this was, was packages. And so I cannot, I cannot have multiple package objects in the same namespace. But with top level definitions, I, I would have been able to do this. One of my favorite uh, features in Scala 3. Anyway, so um, this thing, like you just give it a zeal of a result, and a result is a place placing. As you can see over here, we're in play API MVC. This is like some object result. Like this is some like this is some some play thing. Okay. So this is a UIO of result. UIO, you know, doesn't need anything, does is not going to fail with anything. Okay. And over here we're calling another helper. Uh, which wants a function that, you know, given a request will produce this um, UIO. I did not need that one actually, but like, you know, all the Hello World examples for play, uh, you know, they write their requests in such a way that, um, you know, that you would be able to, go, um, they all look like this. They all look like this, right? So, you know, I just, I just left it there so that, you know, this version compiles as well, okay? And so we go like self.async, like our self is an action builder over here, which is a play thing right and it's defined like inside of this base controller right which is why i you know i define it like this okay so uh we're going like async and so we have a request and we need to give it a future somehow and like this is the zeo way to you know to convert a zeo into a future we go unsafe unsafe implicit unsafe you know runtime default which is a lazy val i believe well just a val okay so uh you can reuse this right so we're not gonna like instantiate the different thread pool every time or something like this right and we go and save and we go like round to futures and so now we have our request from here we're calling this this function and everything is wrapped up nicely right so we can have a purely functional core in zeal and you know our database drivers and everything you know it can be um, everything clean, everything functional, everything with zero, but only over here in the controller, we're just running against the future and then we're done. Honestly, we're pretty much done here. It's just that, like, unless you like have never seen play, I will explain like a tiny little bit more. So this is a server side templating framework. So over here, we're returning a 200 okay uh, by doing views.html.index. Okay, so uh, if I jump in there, it will uh, jump into generated code, uh, which it cannot do for now. Okay, so index. So see, like, this is like, uh, generated code and it was generated by uh, using this file over here main.scala I'm sorry uh, index.scala.html which lives over here in views okay so this thing is going to convert is going to be converted into a Scala file right so basically we're saying okay this is a parameter it's a text it's a string uh, this is like literally like a current function call right so we're calling a function called main um, we're giving it a string and then we're giving it some XML okay and this is how we reference the text over there. Uh, also notice that um, these spaces, even though like for HTML, they're technically ignored, uh, but they actually are evaluated. Uh, notice over here, so this is this h1 tag, right? Notice how many spaces it has. Uh, if I were to actually save this file, I couldn't convince Scala FMT to ignore this file, by the way. So if I send this uh, request again, you're going to see that this h1 now moved, okay? It doesn't really matter. Browsers ignore this anyway, but you know, for the sake of, you know, this is a tutorial anyway, okay? So if we were to actually jump into main, it might, no, it's, it's not able to jump into main, but this is main, right? So same thing, like this is a comment, uh, it's a current function, you know, you give it a title, you give it a content, which is HTML, uh, it literally returns like this whole HTML uh, with some, you know, again, like this is a comment, this is where it injects the title, which is why over here we see welcome to play. So it gets the CSS from here, it gets the JavaScript from here, it gets the favicon from here. 
I actually don't know if I pronounced it correctly. Okay. And then over here in the body, it actually injects our content, right? So the content that we gave it over here, which is why over here and in, into the body, this content is injected, right? But I change it. So it moved again now, right? So this whole thing is going to be on GitHub. Actually, let me, let me push it to GitHub right now. So let me press enter. Uh, let me do GHTI, which is uh, just an alias of mine um, of the GitHub CLI. I made a uh, tutorial about it a long, long time ago. So it just like what just happened is that it created a repository, uh, created an initial commit, it created a repository on GitHub, and it pushed the main branch and it also opened it in the browser. Okay. Oh wow! Look, I did some WebSocket stuff. Interesting. That's that's kind of new, isn't it? Huh. Funny. Anyway, the link is going to be down in the description. Have fun with it. Let me close this again. Again, the purpose for this is not for you to start projects like this. This is an experiment. This is YouTube after all. Awesome work by everyone who contributed to Scala, especially the tooling team. Seriously, I applaud you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the previous one and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to support tech education, consider doing so on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. And let's watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.